There's another front in the war in Ukraine vital to Vladimir Putin's success. It is the disinformation campaign on state television in Russia that carries the Vladimir Putin's preferred version of how the war is going. The New York Times recently spent more than 50 hours reviewing Russian television. Its conclusion is that Russian disinformation is not solely intended to convince viewers. Just as often, the Times writes, the goal is to confuse viewers and sow distrust so audiences are not sure what to believe. I'm joined now by the author of that piece, The Times' of Stuart A. Thompson. Stuart, thanks so much for, for being with us. So I want to play a clip from Russian TV on the sinking of the flagship Moskva that you used in your piece. Let's take a look at this. Начнем с новости. АЧП в Черном море. Ракетный крейсер «Москва» – флагман Черноморского флота получил серьезные повреждения из-за пожара и последовавшей за ним детонации боеприпасов. Как сообщили в российском Минобороны, экипаж был полностью эвакуирован, крейсер сохраняет плавучесть. Решается вопрос о буксировке его в порт. Причины ЧП сейчас... So there, there's no indication that the ship was attacked by, by Ukraine. They claim the entire crew was evacuated. How, how did the story, as it was told to people in Russia, progress from there? Yeah, they uh, started off by trying to explain away the attack as not an attack, but a fire, an ammunition fire. And then as they were towing the ship back to shore, they uh, it sank in a storm, as they described it. So they you know, really adjusted their story as the news unfolded, but really trying to cast it as not an attack, but, you know, sort of an accident and just trying to save face for, you know, losing a ship. And not only that, but the equipment and, you know, they're very proud of that ship and also the people on board. That's a, a big strategic loss for them and really shows how they try to spin uh, strategic losses for, uh, you know, Russians at home uh, and save face on the morale front as well. What does Russian media say about casualties in the war? Yeah, so far they've been uh, downplaying them. Obviously, it's in March they did start to acknowledge the casualties, but U.S. estimates put them much higher. Uh, I think 10,000 uh, potential casualties, 30,000 injured. And for this particular ship, uh, they said that all the crew was safely evacuated, and uh, independent Russian media said that 40 were killed, 100 were injured. And later they did show footage of uh, sailors from the ship lined up uh, in a, a nicely staged event or it seemed seemed uh, you know images that are going to make people at home feel good about uh, soldiers and sailors being saved from the ship when uh, you know in reality of war is that they're not all going to be coming home and throughout the war they've tried to explain away different casualties ukrainian uh, casualties as hoaxes uh, but it's hard to do when your own soldiers aren't going back to their families uh, Stuart, if, uh, stay with us, because I also want to bring in Steve Hall to the, the discussion, former CIA chief of Russia operations and a CNN national security analyst. Steve, how does the, the Kremlin use state television to present their view? I mean, is this a new level of propaganda from what you've seen? You know, Anderson, it's not so much a new level because the Russians and the Soviets, you know, have been doing this for yes. well over 100 years. It all started, you know, back in Lenin's time over 100 years ago. The technology at the time was he would send out rail, rail cars with show and tell for, you know, for various small towns about Russia, about how great communism is. Now, fast forward to, to, to this day, and, and you've got, you know, you've got television, you've got the Internet. And, of course, so many Russians, the vast majority, get their news from the television because if you don't live in St. Petersburg, Petersburg or, or, or Moscow or one of the larger cities, you're in the rural areas, that's really all you've got, very little internet access. And so, and it's very limited anyway. So this is just really different technology, but essentially the same uh, modus operandi that uh, the Kremlin has always used. Steve, I mean, you and your team looking at all the, these images, what, what, did anything stand out to you or surprise you? Stewart, I'm sorry. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, what we see usually on, in the West is Putin having big rallies, uh, poll numbers go up, and it's it's confusing to, to try to understand why. And I think the thing that I really got from looking at all the footage is this is a, a, a longstanding, aggressive, uh, regular pattern of trying to spin events and really anything we've seen, uh, you know, ca casualties in Bucha, uh, nuclear power plants, uh, skirmishes that result in a fire that uh, raises a lot of alarms, and all of those events are spun in one way or the other with a pro-Russia bent, uh, really leaning into uh, historical narratives that they relied on for a long time. So blaming well, I mean, neo-Nazis, that's one thing that we saw all the time uh, in really any event where there's a casualty or, um, you know, a 
charges of war crimes, uh, things against Russia, they were able to say, well, that was either the neo-Nazis did it or they were responsible or they had a base in a hospital that was bombed. So that was a, a big feature um, and something we're aware of, but it really did stand out on the, the programming. Steve, there are a lot of people who have spent their entire careers trying to figure out what's happening inside the Kremlin. Is it possible to get a sense of the Kremlin's thinking by looking at what they put out on state TV? Yeah, I think it's a. I think there there is a there is a sort of an optic there. It's it's like you know open source intelligence when you watch what they're putting out in these very shiny Western looking you know CNN looking uh, look, looking studios, uh, and you know the reason that it's important to watch this and you know God bless Stuart for putting in all those hours. I certainly wouldn't want to be watching that all day long, but it's important to do it because. Russians have screwed up. The Kremlin has screwed up in the past uh, on this. You'll recall there, there have been previous wars in Chechnya and uh, also um, in Afghanistan where there have been protests because mothers have started talking about their sons not coming home. There was the sinking uh, about two decades ago of the submarine Kursk, where the entire crew was lost after an accident. And Putin didn't handle that very well from a propaganda perspective, saying, no, we don't need Western help. And Russians got angry. So it's almost more like the more anxious and the more push forward that you see on Russian propaganda propaganda, the more nervous uh, the Kremlin is. And that's, mm. that's, a, that's an, an interesting indication, Anderson. Yeah. Steve Hall, Stuart Thompson, uh, really interesting. Thank you so much.